Section 733. So this is what Maxwell's equations with the, uh, the correction to Ampere's law looks like. Um, this is differential form, of course. You can probably easily translate these to integral form. This is the Lorentz force law. It says that if you know what the electric field and the magnetic field is, calculating the force is rather easy um, using that special formula there. Um, so this is basically everything you need to know except for what happens inside matter, um, which we're going to cover very shortly. And uh, we're going to take a little bit of a, uh, we're going to go off to the side and say what happens if, um, oh, um, oh, we also have this equation that kind of joins J and the charge density. It's a continuity equation. Charge is conserved. Minus, minus, minus. Okay. All right. Um, so we can actually plug in this term into here. And so we get this. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Forget what I just said. What happens when there's no current and there's no charge? This is zero. This is that. And this is that. Okay. So um, in that case, um, we can actually substitute in one for the other, and we get a really nice set of differential equations that will give us a wave equation that's light. So it's really we're going to cover that in chapter eight more. Um, okay, what if we said that there was such a thing as magnetic charge, and the the div divergence of the B field was um, mu naught eta? Okay, so that's the the magnetic charge density of space, just like rho is. So we're not going to do that anymore. And then for the continuity equation for this, we can introduce and say that the K, um, the current of the magnetic charge is equal to minus the eta, the magnetic charge. Okay. And then so this term, now we needed a correction um, for the magnetic current, and that's just equal to minus mu naught k vector. Okay, So now we have a full set of equations where there's even more symmetry. I have these two terms reversed, but you can see how they just directly line up with each other. And um, the interesting thing is this is so beautiful and so symmetric and working with equations like these is so beautiful and so symmetric. You almost wish magnetic monopoles would exist somewhere. And it's, it's uh, really a shame that they don't. It, it just, it's one of those things that it makes me sad. <laughs> it actually does make me sad because the universe would be so much more beautiful if there were monopoles. Um, and uh, his comment here is he said, apparently God just didn't make magnetic monopoles. He just didn't do that when he created the universe. Um, really sad thing is that um, in the quantum theory of electrodynamics, Dirac worked out that uh, you, you must have quantized charge if there's a monopole, a magnetic monopole, anywhere in the universe. And there's a problem in the back of this chapter. Um, I'm not going to give away the solution or anything like that, but once you understand how to calculate momentum and, and, and things like that, it's rather easy to prove that if there is such a thing as a magnetic monopole, then the electric charge must be quantized. It's just there's no way around it without, uh, otherwise you have to violate the conservation of momentum. So anyway, I'm really sad that we don't have magnetic monopoles. Um, I'm still hoping we'll find one one day, even though there's absolutely no evidence that they exist in any of the experiments we've ever conducted. Um, unfortunately, the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. So. There's, there's a lot of people have hope that we'll find one one day or figure out how to make one. So anyway, thanks for your time. Uh, this was a fun diversion. And unfortunately, we're not going to be using this. This is going to be zero. This term isn't going to exist. You don't have to worry about this. So anyway, thanks for your time. Bye.